Let's talk about Index DB in this video because something special has happened with Safari 15 and Index DB. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now, for those of you who do not know what Index DB is, it's basically you can think about this as local storage, but it's much more lower level than just key and a string value. For example, in local storage, you can just store a key against a string value, but index DB allows you to store much richer data types and files and blobs and all of that stuff. And it's a JavaScript level API. You can access it with JavaScript and just like local storage, just like cookies, just like basically any sensitive resource on the web, index DB also follows same origin policy. Same origin policy means that for example, this attacker website cannot access, cannot make an API call to your bank to perform a transaction and also do it successfully. Because sure, they can try to do that, but the moment they try to do it, it will be blocked because of the same origin policy. That means only the website bank.com or whatever your bank is, is allowed to access its own resources, whether that's cookies, whether that's local storage, that's basically anything. Safari, however, broke this promise in version 15. So this website, safarileaks.com, is programmed in such a way that this can detect other websites creating index DB databases inside of Safari. For example, I'm going to click this link, which is going to take me to google.com. You can see keep.google.com. And right over here, the moment I do that, let me just go ahead and refresh this once. And the moment I do that, you're going to see that we do get my own Google unique ID, user ID and my thumbnail. Now, how does this happen? Well, this happens because Google is storing data about me in the index TV table name. And that table, that information, that database is visible to this tab as well. Now, this is of course a violation of same origin policy. Why? Because this site was never supposed to access something which is stored under google.com's domain. Let's refresh this and try it out with, let's say dropbox.com. So if I open this and if I go back, to the safarileaks.com, you're gonna see that it starts telling me that your browser leaks two database names, which are coming from dropbox.com. So this website over here is not only just able to detect whether your Safari is vulnerable or not, but it can also read the database names, which these other websites are creating on your computer. And sites like Google, for example, are also able to leak the user IDs. Why? Because they use that particular user ID in the table name, in the database name. And this is particularly not Google's fault. Obviously, nobody would really assume API, web API like IndexedDB to be vulnerable. So, but this, this just opens an attack vector. Now, a lot of people might be thinking that, hey, why does reading the name, for example, anything would be vulnerable at all? Well, first of all, we don't know how other websites or how all websites on the web are storing data in index db some of them might be storing sensitive data within the name of the database itself then that is vulnerable right just like we saw with google you are able to extract out the google id but even with google's user id and the thumbnail it is interesting because as an attacker if i have that thumbnail with me if i have that user ID with me, I can use Google's public API to derive more content against that user, perform some image search on behalf of that user to get more images for them, and then probably just, just scare them a lot that, hey, you are being tracked somehow doing this and that on internet and maybe just blackmail them as well. I'm not giving anyone ideas here, but I'm just telling you that this could happen. And anyone who's not technical enough would probably believe this a lot because assume that you're randomly browsing on a web page and on some shady web page, you immediately see your five photos, uh, one of them, which is from your Google account, and four of them are the attacker found out from your reverse image search and figuring out your Instagram and just showing it to you that, hey, I have some personal data on you. I would like you to do whatever, you know, send Bitcoin or so whatever they do these days. So this is this is problematic, right? You cannot just say that, hey, this is something which is casual. It's not. And it's, it's like a huge lapse of security on Apple's end in this case. But yep, I mean, so far, I think Apple is working on a patch, but I'm running Mac OS latest version. There has not been any critical or emergency security patch released for Safari yet. And not only just Mac OS, it's basically, I think, vulnerable for iPad OS 15 and or any browser on iOS as well. That's pretty bad if you ask me. So 
Yep, I mean, that's pretty much it for this video. Stay safe. I would say probably not use Safari if you uh, if you visit a lot of shady websites until this gets fixed. That is all for this one. Let me know in the comments what you think about this vulnerability in general. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.